All right, so last time we talked about uh, voltage dividers. Now we're going to get a little more complex in our um, building our, um, our instrumentation circuits. So uh, we talked about uh, using a resistor that is um, sensitive to some physical quantity, temperature, strain, force, um, and that we can use a voltage divider to then turn that change in resistance into a nice readable voltage like that's that's really useful uh, in terms of instrumentation uh, but there are some problems with that um, if we have a resistor that's say sensitive to temperature uh, what if r1 changes but r2 changes as well then our known r2 value becomes uh, less known <laughs> it becomes unknown uh, and so our equation doesn't work anymore. Or what if R1 changes its value, but as is often the case, changes its value by a very small um, amount? And I'm sure uh, you've been wondering about that. You're probably thinking about those questions even as we were talking about voltage dividers. Um, but these questions matter because they both are very realistic situations. Both of these things happen uh, in real circuits. Uh, and so a Wheatstone bridge is a, a, a kind of voltage divider circuit uh, that tries to get around these problems. So if we look at this up here in the red is our Wheatstone bridge. Um, if you look at it, you can see that it's two voltage dividers in parallel. Here's our uh, positive voltage, right? The, the positive part of the battery connected by a wire so we know all of this is the same voltage and here's my ground uh, again connected to the other side so we have a voltage divider with an R1 and R2 here a voltage divider with an R3 and R4 there um, now the what we can do is compare the voltages here and here so we've divided the voltage let's say our battery is 10 volts We've divided those 10 volts in two different ways, right? With R1 and R2 and R3 and R4. Then we connect those two divided voltages and we might put a meter here or a galvanometer that tells us if there's a current. Now, if these two guys are different, there will be a current, right? If I divide this, so this voltage here is seven volts and this voltage over here is three volts. Uh, then that seven volts is going to push a current around to the three volts, okay? Um, but if I balance it and I make sure that these two are the same, I'm not going to have a current. If I don't have a current, that means this voltage is the same as this voltage, and that means that I had the same voltage drop through R1 as I did through R3, and so that ratio between R1 and R2 must be the same as that between R3 and R4. So that's the basic function of, of, of a Wheatstone bridge is it gives us two divided voltages and we can compare those different divided voltages. That allows us to measure really small changes uh, in, uh, in R1. Because if, if all we have to do is measure if there is a current, then the, if this changes by, let's say we set this up so this is 5 volts down here, and this is 5 volts down here, if this changes just a little bit, um, this voltage might go to 4.98. Okay, That would actually create a voltage here, right? And we could measure that voltage difference. Uh, between this section and this section. So that makes it a much more sensitive system uh, than if we used a simple voltage divider. The other thing it does is it allows us to cancel out noise uh, that might show up um, in all of the different resistors, right? If our temperature of our whole circuit changes, well, if this changes by the same amount as that, by the same amount as that, um, then we don't have to worry too much if r3 and r4 both go up a little bit then our voltage here is going to stay about the same okay and so that helps us to cancel out some of the problems with um, what happens if uh, if conditions change 
the actual resistance of R3 and R4. Okay, so if our bridge is balanced, again, just to go through the, this process, that means uh, the E0 here is zero, right? That means we have the same voltage here that we do up here. We can write these equations here. This is telling us that the delta V, uh, the voltage drop across one must be the same as the voltage drop across three, right? If this is both five and this is 10 volts, then this drop has to be five, that drop has to be five too, okay? So we can write these equations here that describe the similarities between the currents and the resistors. Um, and then we can also write that if there's no current in this wire, then whatever current goes through here must go through there. That's the junction rule, okay? So if we have uh, Kirchhoff's junction rule tells us that whatever current goes into this junction has to come out. If there's no current going through here, then this current must be equal to that current. And then we can do a little bit of math with that and figure out what we already knew from the previous slide is that if we're balanced, the ratio between R1 and R2 is the same as between R3 and R4. And that's what, that's what a balanced bridge is.